Welcome to Calvary Baptist. And if you're a visitor with us, we give you a special welcome. Today, we thank John and Pat for helping us in worship and thank you for joining us. Let's worship. Hello, I'm going to be reading today from Revelation 4, verses 8 and verse 11. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You alone, Lord, are worthy of glory and honor and praise. For you created all things, Lord, and by your will all things exist. Let us pray. O oh Lord, hallowed be your name. As this verse says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And yes, Lord, you alone are worthy. Lord, you created all things. Thank you for creating me, Father, and for creating us, Lord. I pray we would bring you glory, Lord, pleasing you by obeying your commands, Father, walking in your spirit, loving those that mistreat us, Lord, loving the way you loved us when you forgave us of our sins, Father. Oh, Lord, forgive us the way we forgive our sins against others, Lord, that we would love our enemies, do good to those that hate us, bless those that curse us, and pray for those that mistreat us. Oh, Lord, who else do I have in heaven but you? There's nothing in this world that I desire but you. Forgive me, forgive us for those times, Lord, when we trust in what we see, Lord, for it's all temporary. Lord, help us to put our trust in what we don't see, the eternal life, a home in heaven. Lord, thank you that you've prepared a heaven for us, Lord, where we will escape this world, Lord. Oh, that we would set our affections on things above, Lord, not this world. For, our, for us to, to die would be gain, Lord, as Paul said. But if we're to remain on this earth, may it be for fruitful labor in the Lord. Lord, we pray you would give us this day, Lord, you would help us through. And you would grant us enjoyment in our work and enjoyment in our day, for that is a gift from you, Lord. Keep us from evil, Lord. For yours is the kingdom, Father, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Oh, Lord, that we would bring you glory in our lives. Thank you for your love. Thank you for, the, for sending us your Son, Lord. For being our Father, we can be your children, Lord. Oh, that we would bring glory to your name today, Lord. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless these words. We pray, Father, that uh, we would all obey you, Father, and uh, please God in our lives. Thank you. The scripture for today is from Acts 8, verses 26 to 39. Now the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of the Isaiah prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, 
so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to my Midsummer Midlife Crisis of Faith, or at least that's what I like to call this um, short series for the summer. And last week, if you joined me, you would have heard how Despite my misgivings about Christianity, there are things I love about being a Christian. Well, this week we're looking, about, uh, looking at how I love being a Baptist, despite my misgivings about Baptists. Now, do I have any misgivings about Baptists? Well, you bet that I do. Well, except that we as Baptists don't bet, right? Well, that's really the first thing that I don't like about Baptists is that when we say we're a Baptist, people think that they th think they know what we think. Um, People think they have us pegged as to our beliefs and, and what we believe and how we think and what, how, we, how we act. And uh, so, for example, I've had people say to me as, well, you're a Baptist, so you can't dance. Well, true enough, I can't dance, but that has nothing to do with theology and just everything to do with the fact that I just can't dance. I'm just not good at it. Um, so, but as theologically speaking, we, yeah, there's no reason why we can't dance. Uh, so that's one thing is, and, and I remember too, as a, as a young lad, another young lad came to me and said, and now he knew my dad was a pastor, he knew we were a Baptist, and he's like, your dad's a Baptist pastor, so he can't have sex, can he? Um, yeah, I don't remember how I responded, but probably something to the effect of, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, which probably would have been accurate. But anyway, um, so people think that they know what you're believing as Baptists. Uh, people will hear that you're Baptist and they'll automatically think Westboro Baptist. Now, if you don't know what Westboro Baptist is, you can maybe Google it or maybe just don't bother. But they'll think Westboro Baptist. They'll think, aha, you vote Republican. And meanwhile, we're Canadians. So how's that even going to be a thing? Um, but people get these ideas about you, certain ideas because you just say you're a Baptist. Maybe they should have the idea of, maybe they should be thinking Tommy Douglas who has, uh, was voted in a, uh, a poll just a few years back through the CBC as being, I think it was the, the greatest Canadian or the most important Canadian. And he was a Baptist pastor as well as being in the NDP. And so, you know, we as Baptists, we can be found in all kinds of different uh, uh, political persuasions. And so you shouldn't have us uh, pegged as to what we, we are. So that's, that's one thing is this idea of you're a Baptist, therefore you think exactly like this, and, and people putting us really into a box that maybe we don't belong in. And that also leads us to talk about the second thing I, don't, I really don't like about Baptists, is that we are so disorganized. <laughs> in fact, we're, we're not an organization. We're actually, actually more of a movement. You know, anybody could start a Baptist church. You could start, just get some people together, and you could start a church as, as long as you're holding to some of the main Baptist distinctives or things like Jesus is Lord, uh, the, the authority of the scriptures, the priesthood of all believers, as long as you've got those things in place, you can come together as a community of believers and call yourself a Baptist church. You don't even have to be in relationship with any other Baptist church. And that's part of the problem is that many Baptist church, churches don't have much of a relationship with other churches. And in fact, don't want to have relationships with other churches. Now, we as Convention Baptists, we are part of something called the Baptist World Alliance, which again is not a hierarchical, hierarchical thing that they tell us what to do, but rather it's a network of churches, a network of different families of churches, and uh, we're a part of that through our convention. Now, the Southern Baptists in the States, they used to be a part of it, but a number of years ago, 
Uh, the story I heard was that a certain group of Baptists was joining, so the Southern Baptists were like, well, if they're in, we're out. And so that's the part that I don't like about Baptists is that, yeah, we're, we're kind of this family of Christians, and yet we're one big dysfunctional family. In fact, a family that is estranged from one another. One big dysfunctional, disorganized uh, family where estrangement is, is happening far too often. So that's another thing I don't like about Baptists. Now, is there anything I do like about Baptists? Absolutely. There are things I like about Baptists, and I find that actually when looking through the scriptures, that the Ethiopian eunuch, when he is he's reading through the scroll of Isaiah, and a Philip comes along, and the eunuch is like, who is Isaiah speaking about himself or someone else? Philip then leads him to trust in Jesus. This story, I think, points out to me a lot of the things I love about being a Baptist. And here's the first one, is that the Ethiopian eunuch was free to become a Christian. He had the freedom to trust in Jesus. It didn't matter that he was from Ethiopia and not Judea. It didn't matter that he was probably a person of color and not Jewish by race. It didn't matter of these things. Even his sexuality didn't matter because, let's face it, he was different in his sexuality, being a eunuch. Uh, so these things weren't important to his freedom to come to faith in Jesus. He also had the freedom to not come to faith in Jesus. That Philip explains to him that the suffering servant in the book of Isaiah, in the scroll of Isaiah that he's reading, that that's really Jesus that it's speaking about, how Jesus suffered for the forgiveness of our sins. And so there's the Ethiopian eunuch trusted in Jesus right then and there. But he also would have had the freedom to not. And had he said, well, I'll go off and think about that, or no, I think you're off your rocker for telling me that, Philip would have been like, okay, but do, do consider it in the future. And off Philip would have gone. And so there's freedom to come to Jesus. There's also freedom to not. It's called freedom of religion. And it's something that we hold as very important, not just for ourselves. And it's part of our history because we were born at a certain time and place when you were supposed to be a Christian in a certain way. And we're like, well, reading the scriptures, it's not fitting ex too well or exactly like how you're telling us we should believe and do and think. Uh, so we want the freedom to be able to believe according to our conscience. And we want to believe, and we, we want the scriptures to guide us and we want to believe according to our conscience. We want the freedom to do that. And uh, we have always therefore fought not just for our own freedom to do so, freedom of religion, but freedom for others to do likewise or to do differently. Uh, to believe according to their conscience, even if their conscience dictates to, to not trust in Jesus. So freedom of religion is really important to us, and that's one thing I really like about being a Baptist. But here's another thing, and let's go back to the Ethiopian eunuch. And as he says to Philip, who is this about? Is, is Isaiah speaking about himself or someone else? Philip takes the opportunity to say it's about Jesus. And this is we call it a Baptist distinctive, but really it ought to be a distinctive of all Christian traditions, that we all should be saying, Jesus is Lord. That's what it means to be a Christian, is to follow Jesus as Lord. So we trust that that's true in, in all the Christian traditions, and we certainly hope that it is. But as Baptists, it's all about Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. And the Ethiopian eunuch, he he was baptized to show his solidarity with Jesus, uh, symbolizing the death and the resurrection, going down into the water, coming back up, just as Jesus died and rose again. Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch show, showing his identity with Jesus in that way. And so it's all about Jesus. And for us, it's all about Jesus as Lord. And in fact, it's even, shall we say, baked into how we do things as, as Baptists. Have you ever wondered, for example, why it is that we hold as important uh, congregational votes? And we might think it's because, well, we like democracy or we like to give each person the opportunity to vote according to their preference. It's actually not either one of those. The reason why we do congregational votes on important matters is because we believe that Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is Lord and not the pastor or the hierarchy of the church. Jesus is Lord, so how do we figure out what the Lord wants for us? Well, the Lord speaks, we believe, to the entire body of believers. 
The, the Lord doesn't just speak to the pastor or to the church hierarchy. The Lord speaks to the body of believers. So Jesus is Lord, and that's worked out through the way we have congregational votes. That when we come together for a congregational vote, it's not about what's your preference, depending on what the vote is for, but what is the mind of Christ? What do you believe? Jesus is Lord, so what do you believe the Lord wants in this particular vote? So we actually have it baked right in as to this idea that Jesus is Lord, right into our system of how we, how we do things as Baptists. So Jesus is Lord. That's another thing I love about being a Baptist. Here's another one. The scriptures are our authority. Here again, go back to Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, the Ethiopian is reading through the scroll of Isaiah, and it's through the scroll of Isaiah that Philip is able to say, look, here's Jesus. It speaks about Jesus. And the scriptures have always been important to us as Baptists, as speaking to us about belief, just as Philip was like, look, believe in Jesus. Here he is right here in the book of Isaiah, prophesied before it even happened, before he even came. And so the scriptures are important to us as, as the authority for our belief, the things we believe, but also our practice, the things that we do. Now, it's important that we get this right because Jesus is Lord and the scriptures are authority. But as I've said before, Sometimes it sounds as if we're saying or thinking something like the Bible is Lord and our understanding of it is the authority. We want to be careful about that. There is a subtle difference there that we, is very important. And on that note, it's also important to, that we recognize that the scriptures are authority and not, not so much, um, well, this is, let me put it this way. There's a reason why sometimes we as Baptists, we have had statements of faith uh, and there's some times that we have actually not wanted statements of faith. You see, what happens is when we write down a statement of faith, what we're doing is writing down our understanding of the scriptures in that moment, in that day. But what we need to do is recognize that each generation actually needs to come back to the scriptures on their own. And yes, have help from understandings from the past, but really each generation needs to grapple with the scriptures for themselves. And so the scriptures are authority, not the tradition. And the scriptures are authority and not the traditions of understanding them. You see the difference there. Now, I remember um, the, the director of Northumberland uh, Youth for Christ came to me and I was looking for a statement of faith from our church uh, because we were entering into a partnership where we would uh, have them use some of our space here at Calvary. And um, I remember him asking for a statement of faith, and I was like, well, do you want me to send you a PDF of the entire Bible? Because that really is our statement of faith. So the Bible is our authority. That's another reason why I love being a Baptist. But here's another reason why I love being a Baptist. And that is that, again, the Ethiopian eunuch, notice what he did not have to do. He did not have to go back to Jerusalem and find a priest. <laughs> to confess his sins to and have that priest do some sort of sacrifice for the atonement of sin. He didn't have to do that. Jesus is the high priest. Jesus is the sacrifice for the atonement of our sin. It's through Jesus that we are reconciled to God. And so the Ethiopian eunuch was able to have direct access to God. And we believe in something called the priesthood of all believers, that the Ethiopian eunuch himself would become that priest, that he had direct access to God and we as Christians, we have direct access to God that, that you don't come to me to confess your sins, needing me to do a prayer, prayer of forgiveness for you. You can go direct to God and confess your sins directly and, and receive God's forgiveness. Now, that being said, confession can be good for the soul. So if you want to come and talk to me about life and the things you're going through, that's great. I'm here for you. But you have direct access to God in prayer. And that's one of the reasons why I like guided prayers because it gets all the people of our church family praying rather than just the pastoral prayer of the pastor praying. We don't want to have this sense of only the pastor can pray, but all the people can pray and each has direct access to God. You don't need to go through me or find some priest to go through. Uh, you are the priest. In fact, you represent God to the people of the world and you also represent the people of the world to God through prayer. So you you are a priest. I am a priest, the priesthood of all believers. So that's another thing I love about it. Here's another thing. One more thing that I love about being a Baptist is that really we try to get back to the simplicity of the 
early Christians, the, the grassroots movement of the early Christians and, and the simplicity of it all. Notice the simplicity of, of the Ethiopian eunuch comes to believe in Jesus, trust in Jesus, and he's like, here's water, what's to stop me from being baptized? Notice how simple it was. Now, in our day, if the Ethiopian eunuch was in our day and saying, here's water, what's to be stop me from being baptized? We'd say, well, just for starters, you haven't been through a baptism course, and we'd list off a bunch of things. But not in his day. There was a simplicity of their faith. There was also a flexibility of their faith. When you look at the early Christians of the New Testament era, they really are working out, what does it look like for us to be followers of Jesus in our day? They're not asking, what are the traditions that we need to fit into? What are the traditions that somebody has set before that we need to fit into? They're rather saying, Jesus is Lord. The scriptures are our authority. How now do we live in order to, in order to worship Christ in our day? There's a simplicity to it. There's a flexibility to it. And as we conclude, that's, you know, I've often, re I've often said that when anybody says to me they don't like organized religion, and so many don't like organized religion in our day, even less so now than ever. I always say, well, I don't like it either, and that's, that's why I'm a Baptist, because we are the most disorganized bunch there could ever be. And really we do, there is something to be said for being a Baptist in our day, is that we're not trying to get people turned on to organized religion, but like Philip, trying to introduce the Ethiopian eunuch to Jesus, that's our role in people's lives, to introduce them to Jesus. We don't want to introduce them to the Baptist tradition. We want to introduce them to Jesus. And then through that, what does life with Jesus look like? And that's where I love being a Baptist, is because to me this looks really good of how it looks to be a, a, a follower of Jesus. With yeah, there's lots of things that I have misgivings about with, with Baptists, but I love the freedom that's there. I love the focus on Jesus as Lord. I love the focus on the, the authority of the scriptures. Uh, I love the focus on keeping it simple and grassroots. Uh, I love the priesthood of all believers. These are things I love about Christianity. But at the end of the day, it's not about, well, you know, the Ethiopian eunuch, he wouldn't have become, he wouldn't have been baptized and said, okay, now I'm a Baptist but rather he'd say, I trust in Jesus. I know that Jesus loves me. And that's what's important really for us. Are we helping people not become good Baptists so, so much as helping people walk with Jesus in faith, hope, and love? You know, something else that's very important for people in our day is authenticity. And that's something that we can do, I do believe, as Baptists. Is again, we're not trying to get people to to subscribe to this or that tradition, but rather to ask, what does it look like to be an authentic follower of Jesus in 2021? What does it look like in our day and in our situation to be a follower of Jesus? We can help people grow into that in authentic ways rather than trying to push them into some mold of some tradition, but rather what does it look like in our day? And that requires some flexibility, but again, the early Christians, in the New Testament era, they had that flexibility. Do we? The important thing is the Ethiopian eunuch, he knew that Jesus loved him and he came to love Jesus. I trust that you know that Jesus loves you. Do you love Jesus? Let us take some time to pray. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the freedom we enjoy as Canadians, the religious freedom that we enjoy here in this land. And forgive us when we do not hold as important the religious freedom for others, for all people. We pray, Lord, for those who are living in lands where there is no freedom of religion. And we pray for those who do well to experience freedom from religion so that they can pursue a relationship with you through Christ. Lord, thank you that Jesus is Lord. And forgive us when we make other people or things Lord. Forgive us when we want to be Lord. And we pray that as a church family, we may exalt you as Lord in all that we do and all that we are. Lord, we thank you for the scriptures, the collection of writings we call the Bible. May we not be known as Bible thumpers, Lord, but as people who can open the scriptures thoughtfully and who can open up the truth of the scriptures for others. 
May we have confidence in the scriptures as our authority and humility in our own interpretations. Lord, may we read it and be encouraged and challenged through our reading of it. Lord, thank you that we can relate directly with you through Jesus, our high priest. And may we be helping others know you. Lord, thank you that though the Christian community worldwide is very complex family, and that though we as Baptists can be described as a dysfunctional family, thank you that in the end, the church is simply your people, your family. Lord, help us to keep it simple. And Lord, we turn our thoughts and prayers to a, toward a very complex world that we live in. And so let's uh, take a moment to pray for, for the wider world. Maybe something in the news has, has caught your attention that need people that need your prayers. So let's take a moment of silent prayer. And Lord, we turn our thoughts and prayers to, to loved ones who are facing a very challenging world. And so let's take a moment to pray for others, see who the Lord brings to your heart and mind. Maybe somebody, a close, a loved one that's uh, facing challenges, or maybe somebody in your sphere of influence. Let's take a moment of prayer for others. Lord, we thank you for hearing these, our prayers, both pastor prayers and people prayers alike. Thank you, Lord, for hearing these, our prayers. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And amen. This week, one of my colleagues posted in social media how it seems to be okay to be able to gather together at a hockey match without masks and without social distancing and be able to just scream out for your favorite team. However, it doesn't seem to be okay to gather in churches and sing. Hmm. Well, we are, every week that passes, we are one week closer to the day that we can not just gather together, but also be able to sing together. We will get there. And so in the meantime, we can sing at home, watching out for that playlist of songs and hymns, the songs and hymns that go along with today's worship. And of course, church is really the people. So that's, that's a reminder. Let's keep connecting with one another. And also a big part of worship is to worship through giving. So thank you. You have been generous and faithful in your worship through giving. And we do thank you for that. And so thank you for joining us in worship. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.